Greetings and welcome to another Pokemon 2019 or Pokemon Journeys anime episode review. This time I'm talking about episode 111, so let's get to it. Episode 111 begins in Cerise Institute. Professor Cerise tells Ash, Chloe and Go about the Crown Tundra, which Chloe says looks beautiful. Professor Cerise then says that someone spotted a mysterious Pokemon in the Crown Tundra. Ash and Go are thrilled when they hear this and they wonder what kind of Pokemon was spotted. Professor Cerise says that this has yet to be determined, which is why he wants Ash and Go to investigate, and that they should start by talking to the man that saw the mysterious Pokemon. Ash and Go accept, of course. Now Chloe looks sad here, like she feels left out. Ash notices this, and it is nice that because he notices this, he says that Chloe should go with them. Ash goes out of his way to involve Chloe in the adventure so that Chloe can have fun as well, and so that she is not left behind, which is very nice and commendable. Go agrees with Ash's idea and Chloe does as well, which is why she smiles and she decides to travel with Ash and Go. So they all head for the Crown Tundra while Professor Cerise tells them to take care. I love that Chloe gets to travel with Ash and Go this time since she rarely gets the chance to do this, which is unfortunate, because Chloe deserves more screen time. The episode then cuts to Lilie, Lusamine, and Gladian who are on a ship that is currently navigating through ice. Lilie plays her theme from the games on the piano. This song is already plenty beautiful in the games, but here on the piano, it truly is captivating and lovely. Lusamine is mesmerized as she watches Lilie play the piano. She is so entranced, in fact, that she even recalls when she herself would play the piano back when Lilie was still a baby and Mon was still around. Lilie then starts to think about her father as she continues to play the piano. She remembers the memories of her father that the Sorrow arc showed her back in the Sun and Moon series. Surprisingly, while most flashbacks in Pokemon Journeys are reanimated to match the new animation style, these flashbacks are taken directly from the Sun and Moon series. I guess that this was done to evoke nostalgia by not modernizing or altering them. Conveniently, just as Lilie and Lusamine think of Mon, Magierna shoots out a beam of light that points to where Mon is. Lusamine knows where the beam is pointing to. Gladian knows as well. He says that it's pointing towards the Crown Tundra, which lines up with the data they have gathered thus far. Lilie says so that's where father is, and her Iceum C fittingly shines here. Also, I have to say that Lilie looks more mature here, like she is a couple of years older. Perhaps this is due to the art style change, or maybe this is because she has matured due to her journey. The episode then cuts to Freezington. Ash, Chloe and Go are talking to the mayor of the town since he is the one who spotted the mysterious Pokemon. Go wonders about the shape of the mysterious Pokemon. The mayor says that all he saw was a foosh crossing his sight, so he can't exactly describe its shape. Ash then wonders about the color of the mysterious Pokemon. The mayor says that the Pokemon he saw was white. Unlike with his previous response, he talks about the Pokemon's color energetically because he can recall this very well. Now in both of the videos I made about this episode prior to its airing, I predicted that the mysterious Pokemon would be Calyrex. So when I heard that the mayor says that the mysterious Pokemon is white, I immediately snapped my fingers like, oh right, it is Calyrex, just like I thought. However, just as Ash, Chloe and Go rejoice, because they finally got some information about the mysterious Pokemon, the mayor says, wait, was it really white? Oh, I know, it was yellow. So I was like, okay, yellow, huh? So it's not Calyrex then. Who could it be? The mayor then says, wait, was it really yellow? Oh, I know, it was both white and yellow. At this point, I was like, okay, I give up. I have no idea what Pokemon this is. I lose this round of who's that Pokemon. The mayor then says, wait, was it really both white and yellow? So in the end, he is not sure of what he saw. He says that there was a blizzard at the time, which is why it's difficult to describe what he saw. Now every time the mayor says, wait, was it really like that? 
He turns his head in confusion. I love that Ash, Chloe, and Go imitate him. First they do so one by one, and then they do so in unison. The mayor then says, oh, there's a blizzard today as well. Sure enough, when Ash, Chloe, and Go look out the window, the town has been shrouded by a massive blizzard, which makes it difficult to see anything. The mayor says, you see, with a blizzard like that, most people would have missed the mysterious Pokemon. I only saw it because I am used to blizzards. He then says that he doubts it will clear up anytime soon, so Ash, Chloe, and Go should spend the night in his house. Ash, Chloe, and Go accept, and they are grateful to the mayor for his kindness. The episode then cuts to Lusamine, Lilie, and Gladian, who are forced to brave the blizzard since it started while they were out the doors searching for Mon. Lusamine even exclaims that the sun was out just moments ago. While everyone is struggling, Snowy is just fine since it is an Ice-type Pokemon. Gladian comments that Ice-type Pokemon really are impressively tough. But it's not that they are tough, it's just that a blizzard is basically their home turf. Snow then falls from a tree which scares Magirna, who hides by compressing into a ball. Magirna then rolls down the nearby slope. Lilie chases frantically after Magirna, but she cannot catch up. However, Zoroark uses agility to save Magirna. Now I love how adorable Magirna is when it realizes what happened and that it was saved by Zoroark. Magirna also seems to thank Zoroark, which is sweet. Lilie also thanks Zoroark for helping Magirna. Lusamina then says that they should camp here for the night. This surprises Gladian since this is of course no place for camping. But Lusamina reveals a new invention made by Ether Foundation, an insignia that transforms into a tent. This reminded me of the capsules from Dragon Ball. The episode then cuts to the mayor's house, where Ash, Chloe, and Go are ready to go to sleep. Ash says that he hopes that it will be sunny when they wake up. Chloe wonders if Ash will go search for the mysterious Pokemon if it is sunny, like he hopes. Go says that they will not just search for it, they will catch it. Ash agrees, and Chloe says that she knew that they would say this. They all then have a good laugh. The episode then cuts back to Lusamine, Lilie, and Gladian who are sleeping inside the tent Lusamine deployed. In the morning, Magirna once again shoots out a beam that points to Mon's location. This time, however, the beam points to a clear location, a nearby house. Lilie wonders if her father is just over there, which Magirna confirms. So Lilie runs frantically towards the house, eager to finally find her father. When she finally reaches the house, she exclaims, please excuse me, hoping that whoever lives here will answer. But no one does. So Lilie wonders if no one is home. Just as she wonders this, she hears that someone is playing the piano, and they are playing the same song Lilie was playing earlier. Now they zoom in on Lilie's face here, and it's clear that they invested some extra time and resources into this frame since the animation improves drastically here. There are several moments like this later in the episode. So upon hearing the piano, Lilie decides to approach the window, but before she can look inside the house, she hears that the door opens behind her. So she turns around to see who opened the door, and she finds none other than Mon. Upon seeing her father, Lilie is shocked, delighted, and she blushes. She then rushes her father so that she can embrace him while happily exclaiming, Father! Lilie is just so adorable here. But unfortunately, Mon says, Who might you be? Now, I went into this episode believing that something would be off about Lilie's reunion with her father. I just had a bad feeling when I watched the preview for this episode. So when Mon says, Who might you be? I was like, I knew it. I knew that something was not right. Now what I had in mind was that this is somehow not Mon. So hearing him say that he does not know Lilie made me think that I was right. This is not really Mon, which is why he does not know who Lilie is. Now Lilie is slightly confused by this, but she is not shocked. She takes a step back and she says, it's me, Lilie. I expect that you would only know me as a baby, but I am your daughter. She believes that her father does not know her because the last time he saw her, she was just a baby, so her father does not recognize her all grown up. This is a very valid conclusion. 
Lusamine, Gladian, and the Pokémon soon get to the house as well. Lusamine and Gladian are in shock when they see Mon, while Zoroark happily embraces Mon. It was here that I realized that this is really Mon, because Zoroark would not be so affectionate with an imposter. So here, my theory changed to Mon having amnesia or something like this. Mon says to Gladian, is this your Pokémon? It's here that Lilie realizes that something is off. Gladian explains that this is Zoroark, Mon's old partner. But Mon still does not know what's going on. This shocks Zoroark. Gladian then calls Mon Dad. This confuses Mon even further. He says, Dad? Oh, that's right. This girl also called me that. What is all of this about? I love that the camera shakes when Mon is talking and we can't see him completely. Part of his head is outside the frame. This really adds to the unsettling and shocking quality of this moment. Gladian and Lusamine are completely astonished. While in shock, Lusamine says, Mon? Hoping that she can somehow reach him. But Mon says, how do you know my name? This devastates Lusamine to the point that she briefly faints. She then says that they have been searching for her husband, the father of her children. They have traveled so much to get here and they thought they would finally find him here in the Crown Tundra. Upon hearing this, Mon says, oh, so that's why your children mistook me for their father. This saddens everyone. Mon then invites them into his home for some tea, saying that they are surely tired from their journey. After looking at each other in order to decide what to do, they all decide to accept Mon's offer, with Lusamine thanking Mon for his kind offer. And so, they all head into the house, while Mon tells them to make themselves at home. Now the inside of the house is anything but welcoming. All the windows are either covered or blacked out, so it's very dark inside the house. The house is also noticeably old and worn down. Gladian wonders what his mom thinks about Mon. Lusamina says that if Mon does not recognize them, then he might have lost his memory, which is exactly what I had in mind. Mon then serves everyone tea and or cookies. The piano is then heard once again, playing the same song. This surprises Lilie and like before, we get a close-up of her that has improved animation. Upon hearing the piano, Mon says, I need to introduce you all to my daughter. This shocks everyone, especially Lusamine. At this point I thought, wait, did he start a new family after losing his memory? That's insane. This is like one of those movies where a character supposedly perishes, but it turns out that they just end up somewhere else, far from home, and they end up with amnesia. So they end up starting a completely new life. Mon then says, but this is such a coincidence though, because my daughter's name is also Lilie. So at this point I was like, wait, so he got amnesia and he started a new life with a new family, but he still remembered to name his daughter Lilie. Or is this a horror movie? Is he living some terrifying fantasy where he still has his family with him? But they aren't really his family. He is just too deluded or too hypnotized by the illusion to realize. He then calls for his daughter, but she does not answer. So he decides to go get her. But Lilie stops him, saying, can we go with you? Now Lusamine has a face of utter despair here, which is just so heartbreaking. Mon allows them to accompany him, so they all make their way to the daughter's room. At this point, due to the possibility that this could devolve into a horror movie, I was honestly terrified of what could be behind this door. I was scared of what the daughter could turn out to be. So, Mon opens the door, and inside the room is a piano, and the playing said piano is a girl that looks just like Lilie, down to wearing the same outfit, albeit colored a little differently. However, this Lilie soon reveals its true self. It's a Nihilego, a shiny one to be exact. I was actually momentarily confused here, because I had never seen shiny Nihilego before this episode, so I was like, wait, why is it a different color? I guess it's shiny? Which I confirmed through some research after watching the episode. Also, shiny Nihilego is white and yellow, so I realized that this is the mysterious Pokemon that the mayor spoke of. 
Lusamine, Lilie, and Gladian are all shocked when they see Nihilego, and they recall what other Nihilego have done to them in the past. Like the other flashbacks in this episode, these are not reanimated. Lusamine gets ready to protect her children, but Mon says Lilie, we have visitors, showing that he still sees Nihilego as his daughter. This proves that this really is a horror movie, since while Mon sees Nihilego as a human girl, everyone else sees the actual Nihilego. So after Mon says we have visitors, Nihilego stops playing the piano. Now it does look like Nihilego is wearing a hat, so it is fitting that it plays the role of Lilie. Gladian calls for Soro Arc and he gets ready to battle Nihilego, but Lusamine stops him. Nihilego then banishes like a ghost. But Mon says, huh? Lilie? I'm sorry, my daughter is quite shy. Well, I am sure that she will show up at some point. He then leaves saying that their tea time was interrupted, so he will brew some more tea. This shows just how oblivious he is to his strange situation, since he clearly did not see his precious daughter float up and banish. Also, it's adorable how Magir now holds Snowy here. Gladian then wonders why Lusamine stopped him from attacking Nihilego. Lusamine says that Mon thinks that Nihilego is his daughter, so how would he react if Gladian attacks Nihilego? This leaves Gladian at a loss for words. Lusamine then says that there must be a reason for all of this, so the first thing they should do is find out what this reason is. Gladian and Lilie decide to look for clues while Lusamine decides to talk to Mon some more. But before she leaves, she says that Lilie and Gladian should tell her if they find Nihilego, and that they should be very careful. Lilie and Gladian both say yes. The episode then cuts to Ash, Chloe, and Go, who are on their way to where the mayor supposedly saw the mysterious Pokemon. Go says that they should be close to the place in question, but Ash wonders if this is really the case. Pikachu then senses something, and he uses his nose to get a better idea of what he sensed. After determining what he found, Pikachu motions that everyone should follow him, which they do. Just before the episode cuts away, we see that they are on their way to Mon's house. So I guess that Pikachu detected the familiar scent of Lilie, Lusamine, Gladian, and their Pokémon. The episode then cuts to Lilie, who is searching for clues. She soon starts to play her theme on the piano. As she does this, Nihilego appears behind her. Nihilego has a flashback of Mon and baby Lilie, and of an injured Mon who utters Lilie while unconscious. This startles Nihilego. Based on what is revealed later, I guess that Nihilego is startled here because it realizes that the girl in front of it is Lilie, who is the very same baby girl from the flashback. Lilie then walks towards the window. She uses her fingers to wipe away what I think is soot from the window. This allows some light to get in, but Lilie ultimately opens the window. She then turns her attention to a nearby drawer that is now illuminated by the light from the outside. The episode then cuts to Gladian, who is also searching for clues. He soon finds a mirror that is missing its glass. He then enters the nearby bathroom where he sees that the bathroom mirror was also removed. He realizes that something is up with the mirrors. My first thought here was, is someone trying to hide the fact that they are a vampire? Now seeing Lilie play a specific song on the piano, then seeing her wipe off some soot off the window, then seeing her open the window, which shines light on a point of interest, seeing Gladian turn the wooden mirror around to reveal that the glass is gone, Seeing him find that the mirror of the bathroom is gone. Seeing them both search for clues. Seeing all of this happen while scary music plays in the background, and in such a dark, dilapidated and creepy house, while Nihilego skulks around like a ghost, and while an unsettling story unfolds around them, really sells that this is basically a horror movie or a survival horror game. Both of which are things I love which is part of the reason why I really enjoyed this episode. The episode then cuts to Lilie, who starts searching through the drawer she had her eye on earlier, while Nihilego hovers behind her. Lilie initially finds nothing, but she soon finds a dirty uniform. Upon closer inspection, she realizes that this uniform belongs to Mon. 
Nihilego then gets ready to attack Lilie. I guess that it was waiting to see if Lilie would indeed stumble upon some clues. Lilie then finds a mirror. She realizes that Nihilego hid this mirror. With this mirror, Lilie sees that Nihilego is behind her. This entire scene is another great example of the horror DNA in this episode. Now, when Lilie turns around in fear, the animation once again peaks. Like seriously, just look at Lilie right before turning and right after turning. The difference is almost night and day. It almost feels like we are watching a different anime. Just as Nihilego attacks Lilie, Pikachu jumps through the window and he uses Iron Tail to swat Nihilego away. This sequence is masterfully animated, and it is leagues above the usual quality of Pokemon Journeys. Props to the team for pouring extra time, effort, and resources into enhancing key moments in this episode. Hopefully they continue to do this going forward. So, Ash jumps through the window as well and he wonders if Lilie is alright. But Lilie is just happy to see Ash. Gladian then enters the room wondering what is going on. He is then surprised to see Ash, who is surprised to see Gladian. Though I do not know why Ash is surprised, because if Lilie is here, then it makes sense that Gladian would be here as well. Gladian wonders what Ash is doing here. Ash says that he was following Pikachu, and then he saw when Nihilego was going to attack Lilie. Pikachu then greets Lilie, who is delighted to see Pikachu again. This is an adorable moment. Upon hearing the name Lilie, Go realizes that this is the girl that was traveling, searching for her father. Lilie confirms that this is the case, that this is why she is here. She then shows Gladian the mirror she found. This surprises Gladian, who likely realizes here the significance of the mirrors. The episode then cuts to Lusamine who shows Mon a picture of them and their children, saying that this is her husband. But Mon says, this man is your husband? I don't see the resemblance. This is of course crazy because there is obviously a resemblance. This makes you wonder if Mon does not know what he looks like, meaning that he has never seen himself. Never seen himself? Hidden and broken mirrors all around the house? Hmm. The plot thickens. Now upon hearing this, Lusamine is devastated. She just looks so sad here, which is painful to watch. Mon then notices something in the photograph, which gives Lusamine hope. But Mon simply says that the man in the picture looks happy. Lusamine is then once again sad when she realizes that Mon did not remember anything. Lusamine then decides to spill the beans about Nihilego likely so that she can force Mon to snap out of his delusion. But before the cat is out of the bag, Nihilego appears to silence Lusamine, but Gladian manages to save his mother. Mon then says, Lilie, what are you doing? Sotoark then tackles and restrains Nihilego, who decides to vanish. But Lilie stops Nihilego by calling out to it. Lilie thanks Nihilego, saying, you rescued the father, isn't that right? Lusamine wonders what Lilie means. We then see what Mon sees. He sees two Lilie. Ash, Chloe, and Go then appear. Chloe and Go have the dirty uniform and hidden mirror respectively. Now it's cute that Snowy and Magirna are happy to see Ash and Pikachu. Everyone then sits around at the fireplace. Lilie gives Mon the dirty uniform, and he wonders what this is. Gladian says that he believes that after the accident, Mon ended up in some other world. Mon wonders what this accident is. So Lusamine explains that Mon had an accident while researching ultra wormholes. This jogs Mon's memory a little. Gladian then says that after ending up in that other world, Mon interacted with Nihilego, and then they both returned together to this world. But instead of appearing in the Alola region, they ended up in the Crown Tundra. This is the exact same theory I had in mind going into this episode, minus the Lego. Lilie then says that after returning to this world, Mon started to live in this house with Nihilego, as father and daughter. Nihilego then recalls what happened. One day, in the ultra deep sea, Nihilego was just walking around, minding its own business, until an ultra wormhole opened above it. 
Mon fell out of this ultra wormhole and Nihilego was kind enough to catch Mon. Upon touching Mon, Nihilego was able to see what happened to Mon, and it also saw Mon's memories of his family. The unconscious Mon then uttered Lilie. Nihilego then dragged Mon to an ultra wormhole. Nihilego entered the ultra wormhole with Mon, and the two of them ended up in the Crown Tundra, near the house they now call home. After being dragged into the house, an unconscious Mon said Lilie once more. Nihilego then seemingly used its power to heal Mon, and to tamper with his memory. Since shortly after this happened, Mon woke up, and he called Nihilego Lilie. Gladian says that he does not know why Nihilego wanted to become Lilie, but that Mon and Nihilego have lived a happy life together, which is why Nihilego feared that Mon might regain his memories if he saw his reflection, which is why Nihilego removed all the mirrors and why it covered all the windows. Lilie says that if Mon's memories returned, then Nihilego would not be able to continue living with Mon anymore. Lilie says that when she saw that the uniform and the mirror had been stored away so carefully, she knew that Nihilego cherishes Mon, since Nihilego could have simply thrown these away. Gladian then has Mon look at the mirror. Upon seeing his reflection, Mon's memories return. This includes both memories that we have already seen and new ones as well. The new ones show Mon's life with Nihilego. I love that in each moment, they first show us Nihilego looking like Lilie, and then they show us normal Nihilego, which shows the contrast between what Mon believed he was experiencing and what he was actually experiencing. Nevertheless, these scenes are very heartwarming and wholesome. You can tell that Mon was genuinely happy, and that Nihilego cares deeply for Mon. These scenes show that this is far from the horror movie it appeared to be. Instead, this is a touching tale of love and family that made me feel emotional, especially with the sad music playing in the background. After the flashbacks, Mon says, I remember everything. This surprises Lilie, Lusamine, and Gladian. Mon then turns to every member of his family and he calls their name. Mon does this first with Gladian, who responds by saying, Dad. Mon then does this with Lilie, who responds by saying, Father. Finally, Mon does this with Lusamine, who responds by saying, Mon, while tearing up and crying in the most beautiful way possible. It is clear that she is filled with such joy that you can't help but say, ah, how sweet. She clearly loves her husband very, very much. This scene also has upgraded visuals, which enhances just how gorgeous Lusamine looks here. They really wanted this episode to be something special, and it shows. Mon then embraces Lusamine, who embraces him back while saying, welcome back. Lilie and Gladian then join the embrace while also saying, Welcome back. Mon says, I'm back. Zoroark, Magirna, and Snowy then join the embrace, making this one big family hug, which is just so touching. Ash, Chloe, and Go are happy when they see this. Chloe even tears up. Mon then says that he cannot believe that Magirna is moving. Gladian says that this is thanks to Lilie. Mon is surprised. He says, my little princess did that? Embarrassed, Lilie looks away and she says that she was only able to fix Magirna because of Mon's journal. Lilie is so adorable here. Nihilego sees that Mon is happy with his real family, so Nihilego decides to vanish, likely for good. But Lilie stops Nihilego from leaving and she says, do not go, Lilie. Mon then says, I want that too. Lilie, if it wasn't for you, I would have never reunited with my family. If you would like to, why don't we keep on living together? Lusamina says that this is a good idea, and Gladian says that he is all for this idea. Nihilego then transforms into Lilie, and Lilie holds Nihilego's hand, saying, We are both Lilie, isn't that right? Nihilego smiles, it blushes, and it holds Lilie's hand. This is such an adorable, beautiful, and heartwarming moment, especially since 
the animation is once again improved here. Also here we basically have normal Lilie and shiny Lilie. I do want to point out as well that when this scene begins, the suit starts to fall off the window, allowing more and more light to pour into the room as the scene goes on, eventually leading to a room that is basking in light. This is not only a nice and fitting touch that enhances the special and beautiful moment that unfolds here, but this is also symbolic of several of the plot points in this episode, which is nice. Lilie, Lusamine, Gladian, and Mon then hold a beast ball together. Mon says to Nihilego, let's go home, together. Nihilego then clicks the beast ball, which opens, and Nihilego is caught. This makes Lilie, Lusamine, Gladian, and Mon very happy. Also, they split away from each other, and Gladian is the one with the beast ball in hand, indicating that while they all caught Nihilego together, Gladian is the one that will care for Nihilego directly, which is of course understandable. The episode ends with a close-up of each of their faces, showing just how happy they all are, with Lusamine looking very adorable. This moment also has upgraded visuals. Chloe then has the idea to take a picture of the family, which she does. A picture of the family and their Pokémon, which is very wholesome and touching. I especially love that Nihilego is sitting by the piano and that Magirn has a bouquet of flowers. So overall, this was an amazing and beautiful episode. It was great to see Lilie, Lusamine, and Gladian again, especially because they got a lot of screen time, since the episode was focused on them, so they got a lot of time to shine. It's nice that they were able to finally find Mon, not just because they finally got to reunite with their father slash husband, but also because the search for Mon began back in the Sun and Moon series. So it's nice that Pokemon Journeys was able to grant a closure to this storyline. I absolutely love the horror movie slash survival horror game vibes that this episode had. I was honestly on the edge of my seat wondering what is wrong with Mon. They really did a good job of unsettling me and of building a compelling mystery that had me trying to guess what was going on around every corner. And the conclusion slash resolution to the conundrum was very satisfying even if it wasn't as dark as I anticipated, since it explained why Mon never tried to return to Alola, or why he never tried to reach out to his family. It's also great that they caught a shiny Nihilego that is now part of their family. Its nickname is even Lilie. This is ironic though when you consider just how much harm Nihilego have done to this family in the past. I also just love how heartwarming and touching this episode was. It really showed just how much Lilie, Lusamine, Gladian, and Mon care for each other, and how strong the bonds of family are. This only enhanced the happiness I felt when I saw them being a happy family again. This episode also showed that being a family is not just about sharing the same blood. Instead, family is about love, about belonging, about caring for one another about being there for one another, and about helping one another. Nihilego and Mon were very much a family, and Nihilego went on to remain in the family, which is touching and the best possible outcome. Also, Nihilego was just too adorable as Lilie. Finally, I love how they poured in some extra time and resources into this episode, so that the animation could be significantly improved during key moments. This really elevated what was already a marvelous and beautiful episode into something truly special. Hopefully the same level of dedication will continue to be poured into significant episodes in the future. So yeah, this episode was truly remarkable and outstanding. Definitely an episode to remember. But that's the video, as always. Leave your own thoughts down in the comments below, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did and would like to see more like it, then please consider subscribing to my channel. I love Pokemon and I love making videos on both the anime and the games. Also, please consider clicking the links on screen so that you can check out more videos like this right away. Thank you very much for watching and let's meet again in the next video.